work is actually different from power. Okay, so work is measured in joules and power is measured in joules per second or what. So they, they have a, a time component to it. So worker breathing describes the power needed to overcome both elastic and non-elastic resistance during inspiration and normal breathing, where expiration is passive. And the work is measured in joules, where one joules equals um, one newtons per meter or one liter per kilopascals. And the formula here is pressure times volume for one breath. If you're looking at it in terms of time, then you have to say power. And this is where it gets confusing, is remember that work has units of joules. Power has units of joules per second or watts. And you've got this line from Ganong, which has estimates of the total work of quiet breathing range from 0.3 to 0.8 kilogram meters per minute. So they've got a time component here. And this is wrong. So in actual fact, this should say the total power of quiet breathing ranges from 0.3 to 0.8 kilogram uh, minute, uh, kilogram meters per minute. Okay. And, and just be aware of that because you, you will see the terminology being used incorrectly in some textbooks. And because they use incorrectly, the units will be different. So I want you to be aware of that. At rest, oxygen consumption equals three mils per minute or less than 2% uh, of oxygen consumption and where west is less than 5%. And the efficiency is quoted at 10% where west has it at 5 to 10% with the rest lost as heat. So the work of breathing is needed to overcome elastic resistance and non-elastic resistance. Elastic resistance is to do with the elastic forces in the lung and chest wall, or simply put the elastic recoil. And it's also to do with the resistance from surface tension at the alveolar gas liquid interface, or simply known as surface tension, okay? With the non-elastic resistance, it's frictional resistance to gas flow through the airways, um, known as airways resistance. And then after that, you get frictional resistance from deformation of thoracic tissue, and that's viscoelastic or tissue resistance. The third one is probably inconsequential. Uh, it's inertia associated with movement of gas and tissue. And that's more um, for high frequency oscillatory ventilation. And I've just, that, I've just included that here as per nuns, but the main ones are going to be uh, airways resistance and viscoelastic resistance for, for non-elastic resistance. Now, if you get asked about the work of breathing, I want you guys to take a seat and breathe. Because when you take a seat, this will give you the answer for the factors that affect work of breathing. So the factors that affect worker breathing are surface tension, elastic recoil, which affects elastic resistance and airways resistance and tissue resistance, which affects non-elastic resistance. This is the diagram you'll see from West. So the key things about this diagram are that we're starting from minus five centimeters of water and the work of breathing is considered in this trapezoid. Okay. So this, this is a um, diagram from West and the, what they define as the elastic work is this trapezoid here. So um, overcoming elastic work in O, A, E, C, D, O. Compare this to the diagram from Ganong. In Ganong, we have compliance work or elastic work shown to us as a triangle. 
And so the question that I'll ask you guys is, work of breathing, trapezoid versus triangle. Why? Why is that that difference? So trapezoid equals work of breathing of lung versus triangle, which equals work of breathing of lung and chest wall. That is the answer. When we think about the work of breathing, this is the graph, this is the um, static compliance curve that you'll see. And transmural pressure here. So transmural pressure is the pressure across the wall of an organ or pressure gradient across the wall. And you'll see different, uh, and this is why it gets very confusing, you'll see different labels of the x-axis. You'll see transmural pressure, you'll see pressure gradient, you see intrapleural pressure, transmural pressure, um, transpleural pressure, sorry, alveolar pressure and mouth pressure. I'm sure you guys have seen all those iterations of what you can put down on the X axes. They're essentially the same thing. Um, they just talk about the, the change in pressure, okay? But um, what you wanna actually have, I think more correct is the transmural pressure. So the Transmural pressure, the way to calculate transmural pressure, it's always the pressure inside the wall of an organ minus the pressure outside the wall of an organ. And sorry, let me get rid of uh, this one here so you can see. So these are the components when we talk about work of breathing. Know that there's actually three different types of compliance curves that are out there. There's the lung, and remember it's inside and minus out, so it's alveolar pressure minus intrapleural pressure. And then you've got chest wall, which is intrapleural pressure minus atmospheric pressure. And then you've got total respiratory uh, lung compliance, which is alveolar minus atmospheric pressure. The thing to note is that atmospheric pressure is zero. So quite often when we talk about total respiratory lung compliance, that is why it's very, it's okay to use alveolar pressure on the X axis or mouth pressure. Okay. Now, what you see here is that I just have the lung compliance curve here. And you can see that the lung compliance curve here, if I was to draw the work of breathing for the elastic work, is a trapezoid. And that is the same as the diagram you see in West. Because remember that West is a physiologist. He's not an anesthetist. He is a physiologist who did a lot of work uh, on lungs in dogs. And these were isolated lung studies. So they're outside. Um, and, the way, and the way that you can tell when um, a diagram is specifically um, sort of uh, referring to lung compliance is where it starts off at the intrapleural pressure. Anything that starts off at minus five is always just gonna be talking about solely lung compliance. The reason for that is that when you look at total respiratory lung compliance, it starts off at zero. The reason it starts off at zero is because remember, this is at FRC. At FRC, you have the lung trying to collapse and then the chest wall trying to expand and they are at equilibrium, which is why it starts off at zero. And so when you look at the total respiratory lung compliance, which is lung and chest wall, the area is a triangle. Couple of things about this uh, graph that I draw. I don't know whether you've noticed on the y-axis, the, the way that I label the y-axis is mils per kilo. And the reason I do that, it just acts as prompts for me to understand what the volumes are. So I go 15, 30, 37, 82. In other words, 15 mils per kilo is my residual volume. 30 mils per kilo is my FRC or, um, and then to go from 30 to 37, you know, seven mils per kilo is my tidal volume. 
and 37 to 82 is 45 mils per kilo, which is my inspiratory reserve volume. And then you can add those volumes up together to get your inspiratory capacity, to get your expiratory capacity, um, and to get your closing capacity. Yeah. Actually, we'll, we'll discuss about closing capacity. This one is not, it's not shown on this diagram, but I'll, I'll show you um, how closing volume is calculated. Um, and then you add that on to your residual volume. Okay, but these are where these numbers come from. So the flu, okay, when it starts off at zero, we are looking at the total respiratory system. And then when we start at minus five, which is here, we are looking at just the lung compliance. Now, I'm gonna hand out some NQR awards. Some NQR awards because they're not quite right. First one is to Power and Cam. So two things here. Power and Cam has, has done the graph the other way around. Most uh, graphs will, will, will have it from going from left to right. He's done it from right to left. And the reason for that is he's describing it in terms of negative, um, going from you know, negative intrapleural pressure. I, I don't like that at all. Other thing is that he's starting off at minus five. Remember that when you start off at minus five, you are talking about just lung compliance. This needs to be zero if you want this to be a triangle. Okay, so in, in other words, if he wants to talk about elastic work, he needs to have a trapezoid here. Right. This is um, a diagram from none. So this is a correct diagram. So he's starting off from zero, and this is the total respiratory lung compliance that we are talking about.